spiritual commandments. First, I'll speak to you on scriptures. Let us take one by one the scriptures. Holy Quran, Quran Pak, Quran Majid. It is said that Hazrat Rambar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to go on Mount Hir and when he used to come from there, he will call his sahibis, his attendants and tell him what did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told him. This process continued for 22 years and the collection of that is known as quran Pak quran Majid. This is what we know. As a Mohammedan, we are told only this much. It is said when Hazrat Abhagambar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went, he was only illiterate. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told him to read. Then he commanded to him again to read and he began to read. Did this happen that way? When an individual is freed from all his inertia, ego sense, nafs and all kind of other bondages, he is flying wingless in the vastness of the sky. The intellect is purest, many things happen. And when these are narrated for the sake of the transformation of human consciousness, it becomes scriptures. One of the most important scripture of Hindus is Bhagavad Gita. It is said the battle between Pandavas and Kauravas was looming on the horizon. The two armies have gathered in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, desirous to fight with one another. Arjun, the mighty warrior of the Pandava side, has asked his charioteer, the absolute consciousness as Hindus call Krishna, to carry the chariot in the midst of the two armies so that he can get a clear perspective of who he has to fight with. There he is filled with attachment, ignorance, lack of the duty sense and many things like that. This is known as Arjun disease. This is a way of saying almost every individual finds himself in that situation sometimes or the other, then it is the absolute consciousness that reveals the message of, for the transformation of his consciousness. It is said that the, the battle announcement has begun, the cones were blown, the battle was to start with sunrise and will end with sunset. The cons were blown, there is no running away from the war. Now Arjun asks, Krishna tells him, now that when the war sirens have been blown, you are asking me to carry the chariot between the two armies. Do you have doubts about the war? Categorically he denies saying that no, there is no such question in my mind. Bhagavad Gita contains 703 sutras of two lines each. Each sutra is divided into four quadrants with a particular meter which is known as anistap meter. This is important meter. I had asked one of the leading exponents of Bhagavad Gita that two questions. How much time did Krishna take to chant 703 verses? Don't tell me those stories that Krishna is ultimate God. He could do miracles. He could sing those 
verses in a flash of a second all these are childlike talks when the absolute consciousness manifests in human form it is bound by the human limitations of body mind and intellect did it happen that holy prophet was the pagamber or the messenger of god jesus was the only begotten son of god the messiah did they not die because they were in human form as long as absolute consciousness manifests in human form it is bound by the limitations of the realm which is known as body mind and intellect it is said that naqshbandi sheikhs hazrat nazim razi allah taala unno hazrat shah bahauddin naqshbandi razi allah taala unno hazrat lala ji razi allah taala unno all these were masters of impeccable intellect awareness understanding and in fact if we use the hindu terminology they are the incarnations of god yet still they went through the ailments various stages of life from birth to childhood but during all these stages they were away so firstly how much time did krishna speak the way i am speaking to you about bhagavad gita number 1 number 2 if he did then how much time did he take these are the deeper mystical insights and it is said that krishna spoke just as buddha spoke 40 years of his ministry and after buddha entered mahasamadhi it was decided to compile the works of buddha talks of buddha there was no audio system nothing of the sort as we have now i am speaking to you live in this meditation session simultaneously the audio is being recorded so it is the authenticated recording of whatever i speak to you this morning during this session such was not the case during the times when the scriptures manifested be it bhagavad gita be it holy quran or buddhist scriptures after buddha entered mahaparinirvana a congregation a conference of the enlightened ones was convened and it was decided that how to compile the buddhist scriptures many of the monks sariputra mudgalayam mahakashyap all these at times were sent by buddha to go to this direction or the other the only person who had remained with buddha during his ministry was anand and anand was not enlightened because he was not enlightened he may narrate what buddha said he may give his own meaning to it the authenticity of that will not be maintained the conference was going on anand was not allowed in because he was not enlightened and before he entered into the commune of buddha he asked three things he said before i take initiation from you i am your elder brother i seek three things number one you will never ask me to go anywhere in any other direction like any other monk do secondly i will sleep in the same room where you sleep buddha granted him these boons and these became an obstruction in the process of his enlightenment wives take their husbands for granted and this 
becomes an obstruction in the process of their enlightenment in most of the cases. Anand wept. He abandoned food and everything. And then just before the conference was to decide, Anand became enlightened. And he says, all the Buddhist scriptures begin, thus I have heard. This is very important, thus I have heard. It is not that he is putting anything of his own, he is narrating what he has heard. And that makes the authenticity of the Buddhist scriptures. Now, coming back to Bhagavad Gita, it is narrated on the battlefield, but it is the part of the wider scripture which is known as Srimad Bhagavat Puran, composed by sage poet Veda Vyas, who was a manifestation of absolute consciousness in the form of Krishna, known as sage poet. He was far away. Then Sanjay the charioteer was given the divine vision. He narrates it to the blind king. Every single detail of this fratricidal war. So was it written the same time as it was being narrated? Nobody asked such questions. No, it was not written simultaneously. Entire Bhagavad Gita happened and then while battle was taking place, Sanjay continues to narrate for the blind king and sage poet Vedavyas compiled and composed it as his commentary. Thus I have heard, thus I have seen, because he was seeing and hearing because of his divine vision. As had happened in case of Hazrat Paramba sallallahu alaihi wasallam, thus I have heard and I have seen, because he was asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to read, and whatever was said to him, I have seen and I have heard, and that is what I am narrating to his sahibis who used to pen it down, and thus emerged the compilation as quran e paak quran e majid Did Krishna spoke the verses in the same way as I do? No, I speak to you on my own authority and experience. It did not happen that way. Arjun was filled with despondency, agitation, negativities, ignorance, lack of duty sense, lack of clear understanding. Some of you will know this. When you came in the company of your master, your situation was like this. Confusion, conflict, want to run away from the responsibilities that have been bestowed upon you by the circumstances and situations. This we termed as frustrated. Do not understand how to find ways and means to go through this turmoil, then what happens? When you come, come to the company of the Master, who is nothing else but a mere presence, awareness, a state which is difficult to explain in words, it is like you have been outside in intense heat, sun and maybe rain and as soon as you come in an environment which has been created where there is air conditioning, where there is all kind of facilities, you are immediately comforted as you come in that environment. Master is that environment. As soon as you come within the grasp of that energy field, you begin to feel as if you have come to a different world, a different realm, a realm where there is no conflict, heat, turmoil, 
disturbance. So as soon as this situation arises, you make a decision to come to the master. Unless you enter into the despondency, the frustration from the outer world, you will never turn inward. You are ready. The master, when he sees that you are on the borderline of the sleep, which is the metaphysical sleep, he knows that you can just a little knock and you will wake up. As compared to when you are fast asleep, I may shake you up, but you will turn your side to the other side and will say, mm, don't disturb me, I want to sleep. But metaphysical sleep is that situation where a gentle knock and you wake up. The master says, get up. He even does not say that. His presence becomes a clarion call and you wake up ready to walk miles and miles and miles with the Master along the path of inward journey. What had happened in that moment? Krishna, Arjun is there in a state when there is no thought, no ego sense. There is total emptiness and in that moment Krishna Razi Allah Ta'ala no, if we have to use the Sufi terminology, gave his tawajju and in his transfer of the energy field, the entire message of Bhagavad Gita was given. 703 verses, a glance, a look and in that the entire message was given. When I was eight months old, I was sleeping with my grandfather, Sufi Sheikh Brij Mohan Lal Razi Ta'ala Unu, and that particular morning, between the hours of three onwards, that is the time when Islamic tradition emphasizes on night vigil and night prayer, tahaju, prayer which is done in the night. After the last prayer, of the night which is obligatory on according to Islamic traditions and Muhammadans. It is said Holy Prophet Hazrat Nafagumbar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go to sleep with an intention that I will wake up after one hour and say my prayers. There is no set obligation or the verses that you have to chant at that time and then he will say that prayer and go to sleep. Similar tradition exists in Hindus. There are certain meditation techniques which have to be done in the early V hours, three onwards. Nad Brahma, Devyani, these are some of the meditation techniques which are used during that hour as, and these are known as in Islamic tradition as Tahaju prayers. So it was the hour of Tahaju prayer for Sheikh Braj Mohan Lal and I did not ask anything, he did not say anything, an entire tariqat was transferred. This is known as heart to heart communion, everything was transferred. Then it has to attain a form and shape so that the wider community can understand that. In my case, through my growth, through my education system, understanding of other scriptures and ways and means, that message was decoded. When Hazrat Nafagambar sallallahu alayhi wa sallam experienced something in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the company with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing else but meditation with the self. The meditation in solitude. The meditation or maragwa on Mount He and then afterwards just as you go into meditation every morning, Saturday our sessions are on Saturday, Sunday and Monday, you heard something, you heard the meditation session, you go and explain what you heard to your wife. But now there is a difference between your consciousness 
and my consciousness. You will give your own interpretation. Whereas Hazrat Paghambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam does not have his own inertia. When he narrated what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him, it was exactly the transfer of consciousness which he gave it to his sahibs. And this process continued for 22 years and compilation of that is known as quran e paak quran e majid the holy scripture. And this happened during this holy month of Ramazan, the fasting month. That's why the significance of this month is there tremendous. And it is said coming to the end of that when Hazrat Paghambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam came from the meditation and he was to narrate to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala uno and other sahibis what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell them. There was normal talks of conflict, the world and things like these. Hazrat Paghambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam forgot what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him. This was mention of Shabe Qadr or Laylatul or the night of power as it is termed in the Islamic tradition. He said that particular night whenever an individual does the prayer he will get the benefits 1000 times. This is a priestly communion way of saying making it into a bargain. You pray on that night and your benefits will be a thousand times more. But because of the conflict, quarrels that was going on, Holy Prophet forgot. And when Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Ta'ala Uno inquired, what did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told him? He said, I forgot. But the next day the sun will not rise with rays. And this falls on the odd nights after 21st. It may happen 21st night. 23rd, 25th, 27th, 29th nights. But we celebrate as ritual on a particular day and lack awareness. When did it happen actually? Unless your consciousness has reached to the level of Hazrat Paghambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you will not be able to understand the message. Hazrat Apa Ghambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam was ummi, illiterate. And all these scholars with their PhDs and degrees have not been able to understand the message of an illiterate. So can this message be understood through intellect? It is to be understood through nisbah, through awareness, which is far deeper than understanding. When there is nisbah, there is awareness, the understanding assumes a new dimension. When Krishna looked at Arjun, entire message of Bhagavad Gita was communed to him and sage with Vyas, because his consciousness was at the same level as that of Krishna, he was able to narrate this narrate the entire message of Bhagavad Gita in the form of words, is give it a, a physical form. When the silent commune was communicated by Holy Prophet Hazrat Paghambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam to his sahibis, it was given a form and shape for the humanity to come, it became quran e paak quran e majid when sage Vedavyas interpreted the silence, the silent gestures of Krishna in the form of verses with a particular intonation, a rhythm, a way of chanting, it became the holy scripture of Bhagavad Gita. When Anand narrated, saying that thus I have heard Tathagat came, and the sermon began, thus I have heard, this is how the Buddhist scriptures begin. When we look at the Ramayana, another scripture of Hindus, 
sage poet Balmiki was far away from the battlefield and he is narrating what it is happening he is seeing and visioning through his divine vision and this is for the transformation of human consciousness many centuries after in the year 1500 something of this christian era when sage poet tulsidas represented the matter for the sake of the transformation of human consciousness he was illiterate he did not research into libraries or anything the only place he searched within his inner sanctum and when he dived deep into inner sanctum which is the greatest library he entered into his heart space and represented the entire history of ram in the form of ram charitmanas the portrayal of shri ram as it is engraved on manas means the mind on the leaves on the mirror of the mind because it is through the vocal cord i am speaking to you that is hidden in my bosom or heart it is not written anywhere just you and i and this recording device and the words are forming sentences are emerging the silence is assuming the form of words